Alrighty. Uh, what I have here is a capacitor analyzer that I picked up off eBay uh, at a fair price. Um, this is just some of the paperwork. This is a Cornell Dublier, Dubillier, however you want to say it, capacitor analyzer from oh approximately 1938, 37, 38. Uh, I took the knobs off and took the tubes out. These are the tubes right here. Um, it just takes a couple of tubes. I'm not going to untape all that, but uh, it takes a 12A7 over here for power. And uh, a 65 uh, tuning eye. Basically, uh, when I bought this, it looks pretty good on, on here and everything, but the when I when I took the screws out here and pulled it out of the box there was a lot of white corrosion all over the chassis uh, when you take the knobs off you can remove this plate there's some you can see where there's some here I cleaned up this I, I tried to clean this up a little bit and that's what these you see these brush marks on here I was just trying to clean off that stuff with some ineffective stuff, but I'm going to now use this uh, Naval Jelly Rust Dissolver uh, product on it to try and get rid of this white corrosion. This is quite heavy, actually. And you'll see uh, quite a bit of it's not showing, you know, I have tried to clean this with some other product. Um, now we got a lot of paper capacitors here. We've got the old electrolytics up here, the blue. Um, and all the old resistors and so forth. And uh, I've ordered everything I need to recap this device. And we're going to get to that later on. something I put in there to kind of help absorb some of the moisture because that white corrosion is caused by a lot of moisture problems. I guess this thing was stored in some sort of really moist environment. Uh, the inside of the box not too bad. I've got some some joints here that may need gluing and re clamping just to uh, just to tighten up these joints a little bit. You can see that one right there. You know, put some glue in there, clamp that tight. Let it... There's some deep gouges in parts. These are some scratches and whatnot, but there's a big gouge right there. Um, and uh, some pretty good dings up here on this uh, back corner, or back uh, edge. But all the rubber feet are there. There's there's rubber feet on the bottom, there's rubber feet on the back where you can set it up like this. Uh, and there's uh, these rubber feet kind of help keep uh, when the lid opens like so. Uh, it keeps the lid from stressing the hinges too much. Now I'm going to refinish this. There's some really deep, deep dents here and I've got a little technique to try and draw those out a little bit. We'll try and draw this this gouge out a little bit. That's not going to go away because it's torn. The, uh, you can see the wood fibers. It's kind of torn those and there's some deep dents along this edge too. And um, there's a technique we can use to try and pull those out a little bit after we have, uh, well, when we get to that part. And I, that'll be the last, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap this thing, get electrically sound, you know, and everything, and then we'll come over here and we'll 
something will mess with the case. I want to be especially careful with this faceplate. The faceplate is in really excellent condition with the exception of two white corrosive spots here. And I'm not sure what to do about it. There also was one right down here on the edge that I cleaned up a little bit. But I don't want to get that navel jelly and everything on this paint on here and have it strip off this uh, any, any of the paint or the finish on this side of the, of the plate. So I've got to be really careful when I do that part. This thing here, uh, I want to take this part off because there's there was one problem I found. You see there's two transformers in here. Uh, four mounting screws here and then there's four mounting screw, uh, uh, screws that hold it together here. And, and these mounting screws are held on by feet with, the, with these um, fasteners down here. Well, way back in there, the screw and the nut fell off. I don't know how it I, I don't know how it fell off, but it fell off and I'm, I'm trying to get it back on, but I can't. Uh, it's, it's just too tight in, in between these two coils that I can't really get in there and do that. And then in, deep in here, there are some uh, resistors and stuff that I can't check the value on. And there's also a paper capacitor down in there that I need to remove. And it's, I think they're soldered on to this button bar, what I'm going to call a button bar. Um, You'll see a couple of resistors. I don't know if you can see those two. I, I could get the camera a little closer and you could see them, but uh, just move this up here a little bit. It's kind of dark, but there's there's a couple of resistors. There's also a couple deeper deeper inside there. All right. So, but uh, all in all, this uh, finding the paper capacitors for this thing was difficult uh, for some of these capacitors and I'll explain why. There's a schematic here and a, a parts list of all the parts, the capacitors up here, the resistors all down there. So looking at the um, schematic here, it took me a while to locate uh, some of the you know, this is, this is, I'm really not an electrician. I'm not a professional doing this. I'm just kind of learning the whole thing, and it's been interesting, to say the least. But uh, I've, I've taken here, I've gone and found where my resistors, I'm sorry, my capacitors are located, correlated them with the list, and uh, ordered up everything. Now, you'll notice these top three. Let me get that a little bit steadier so you can see it. Top three, C1, C2, C3, are plus or minus 2% uh, capacitors. Well, those were nearly impossible to find. In fact, I only found one manufacturer that would have these capacitors in those values at those tolerances. And I, I suppose, you know, hindsight, looking at it, I could have just got some plus or minus fives, which were difficult to find, but not as difficult as the 2%, and gotten them a whole lot cheaper. But um, I didn't know what that would do uh, to the accuracy of the device. Now, how accurate is a is a 1938 device anyway. I really, I really can't answer that. But in an era when um, the value, standard values were plus or minus 20% and they were using these plus or minus 2% capacitors, I was thinking I, I really needed those. I really needed that. I don't know. I've seen other people, they, uh, they've gone and they put plus or minus fives in there and, and the thing probably just works just fine. But I didn't know what that would do. I really didn't know what that would do. So I went ahead 
I ordered those things and they were extremely expensive. Probably I'll never get my money out of this device expensive. And on top of that, the shipping, they ripped me on the shipping. They charged me freight, $13 in freight to send capacitors that weighed less than this silica gel pack. And it was just really, really annoying that they had they charged me thirteen plus dollars for that. I'm, I'm I'm really upset about it. But anyway, uh, take this. I've checked these resistors; seem to be all pretty good, except for one or two, which I don't remember which one or two they are. But when we get to that point, we'll we'll address that. Um, this wire has come loose off of here, and basically, uh, I did that. It was here. Uh, on the on this connector, but I, I was going to take out these, and so I was working on that, and then I decided, well, I'm not going to recap this without getting rid of this corrosion problem. So I worked on that corrosion a little bit, and I'm just not satisfied. I think it stopped, uh, killed it, or whatever, but it just doesn't look clean. It just doesn't look good enough for me, and I, I don't know. Nobody will ever see this thing. Probably I'll stick it back in that wooden box and. Who knows who will ever see it, but one one problem uh, there. Well, there was the power cord came in this hole through the grom through a grommet, and uh, it was soldered on here. And I just took it off to get it out of the way. It was ratty, very cracked, and just uh, brittle. So I took it off, threw it out. Uh, got a replacement. Plugged this thing. I, this is this is really crazy. I didn't have a variac or anything. I hooked it up, plugged it in, and and uh, which was I understand now a really stupid thing to do, but it it just hummed really loud, and there's no speaker or anything on this thing. So you get that kind of hum out of a device with no speakers and whatnot. I was just like, oh okay, and I shut it off and unplugged it real quickly because I didn't want to destroy anything in here. Hopefully I didn't hurt the tubes. Um, now, another one of the concerns I had with taking this off, which is, these are, this this bracket is riveted on. Two rivets here, and uh, two, two, two over here on the other side. And these are not, uh, these, are, these are steel rivets that were basically pressed on. Uh, but you'll see, let me get it up here. I don't know if you saw this, if I was holding it properly or not. Let's see if we can get a little bit. There we go. Those are not flush head rivets. It's they're they're rounded heads. And while it might not look that big, uh, the issue was that the face plate. And I'll get I'll get a uh, the glare on it. You can see here a bump here and a bump here, and likewise on the other side, two two correlating bumps, and those went over the rivets, and I just don't like that. So <laughs> you go, because when when you go in here and you and you go to screw these things down, then you get this bump and it just doesn't look right and lay flat. But that's the way the manufacturer made it. That's the way they made it back in in the day but uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna drill these rivets off take this bracket off clean this up put the hardware back into the transformer that holds the transformer in and then when I go to put it back I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these screws and nuts and these are flathead flush uh, we'll just do a little countersinking on on this plate on this plate here, and then uh, put a lock washer and nut on this, and that should get it. That should get it. Uh, that should get it good. Now, let me bring it back into focus. All right. So, I guess so. I'm going to get a drill and a drill bit. I'm going to drill these off, and and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to drill it from this side and just lightly take off the expansion, the, the part of the rivet that was expanded when it was pressed. 
I'm not going to drill all the way through. I'm not going to make the hole bigger than it was. I'm just going to take that little piece off, okay? And then you just got to be really careful with that. I'm getting as close as possible with the camera so you can see the rivet and the area that I'm going to be drilling off. That rounded area right there. So I'm getting uh, as close as possible. Here are the two rivets. I'm going to drill each one off. What I'm doing here is I'm getting uh, blocks underneath here so that while I drill I won't be damaging any uh, putting pressure on the knobs uh, and the potentiometers and the buttons and whatnot. It won't be damaging any of the components. And I'm getting the drill ready. What I'm using is a 5 16 inch drill bit and uh, I would have uh, shown you the drilling process but uh, I thought I was it's just a new camera I thought I was filming when I wasn't filming and I wasn't filming when I thought I was filming now here's the finished uh, process you can see the shavings where I had drilled the rivets off I didn't go all the way through uh, I'm knocking the shavings off, and being careful not to get any of the metal shavings inside the unit because what I'm afraid of is that uh, if any of these shavings get down inside that button bar uh, in, in the mechanical part of that, the buttons, that it's caused some serious problems, some shorting and whatnot. So I'm cleaning off my workbench, getting uh, all those shavings out of the way. Then I'm going to set the analyzer, capacitor analyzer, up on the blocks again. And I'm going to position the blocks in such a way that I can take a punch and knock the rivet through the hole and, and uh, you know, free up that bracket. So I'm going to put a block on the corner here, leaving a gap where the rivet is, so that I, when I go to tap out this rivet, that I don't risk bending the metal. And I found that these rivets actually came out very easily, without, uh, with, with little persuasion, you know, just tapped a couple of times and they popped right out.